Hey folks, this is going to be a real quick video because I'm going to go to bed in a second, but I've just finished uh, sending all the latest changes out to GitHub and I kind of wanted to load. Um, up till recently, if you've wanted to, find, to define a shader pipeline in Keppel, um, you have to do it in one monolithic block. So if I go to another example here, you can see that the whole pipeline has to have the vertex and fragment shaders and the geometry shader if it's there, all inside this one block. Now that's fine for something small like this, but as soon as you get up to examples that are more like this, it becomes very unwieldy. And so I've been looking at how to break this down and make it lispier. And this is the result. You can now define vertex shaders and fragment shaders in their own blocks, just like functions, just like top-level functions. Um, and then you can compose them together into a pipeline. And the only real requirement is that the arguments that you use are compatible, so are a subset of the arguments of the pipeline. So we can see here, um, this one only uses the loop uniform, but that is available in the pipeline, so it's all kosher. The next thing was, sometimes it's not the shader stages themselves that are really complicated, but an individual function. And that function might be used, might be useful in a number of shaders. So what we've got here is def s fun. This is defined shader function. This allows you to to define a function that will then be pulled into a shader stage if and only if you use it in that stage. So you can see here we use calc offset, which means when this is compiled, this code will be pulled in and added to the shader stage. What's really nice about this is you can have as many of these as you like and you're not weighing down your GPU at all. They will stay as Lisp code until they're used in a shader. Um, another nice effect of having this broken down is I can define another pipeline, say PROC2, and it could use this same vertex shader, but then a completely different fragment shader. And it's just as easy as composing what we have here. So I'm kind of chuffed with that. The one thing that's not ready yet is if I go and make some changes up here, Let's put a tan here. You can say it cos. Oops. Oh, you can tell I'm sleepy now. Right. Cos here. And compile this. We don't see an effect immediately. And the reason is we then have to go and recompile the place that it's used and the pipeline it's used in, which is math. Um, that is going to be something that's going to be fixed very soon. It's going to have a callback system. So if you recompile this, it will go and recompile the other. Um, shaders, st shader stages, and pipelines that use it. And that way it will feel like Lisp code. The immediacy will be there, and the ability to experiment will be increased. Um, let's speed this up a little, because it's going very slow. There we go. Um, the last thing I really need to add um, for kind of feature completeness before I start looking at um, the details and making it work well and getting rid of some of the bugs is uh, macros. Shaders should have macros as well, so I'm um, putting in the means for that. They're actually already implemented in the compiler, but I've just got to work out how I expose them um, on Keppel side, just to make sure everything feels right. But it should be as simple as going def s macro and uh, for def shader macro, and then writing what you need. It's going to be really interesting to experiment from then on for a while, just to see what can be created with all this stuff. I was playing with this the other day, and I wrote a very, very simple um, ray marching system and it did not take up much code so yes I'll put up some videos of that soon and thanks for watching